the case of Italy is a very interesting one because you have two populist movements, one on the right in the north, one of this in the south of the left, and uh, they are forced to, to, uh, to adjust. And I think that the overcoming populism will be an imposition when these movements come to power. They'll have to become political parties and not outside movements. And this may take some time, but it is the only way. Because as Ambassador French said, people are not happy with the political system. It's not working. It doesn't provide the answers society is waiting for then they are looking for well, an outside response. You have written a lot about democracy and just from where you were born in the United States, you're, you, you have a great perspective about the world. Where do you see populism moving? Well, look, I think we have to understand and always keep in mind the fundamental moral difference between democracies and non-democracies. NATO to me is not just about uh, a common struggle against the Soviet Union, and I agree with the ambassador, Russia is completely different than the Soviet Union. With all its issues and concerns, it's not the Soviet Union. But NATO is an alliance of democracies. There's one country there that should be of some concern, which is Turkey. Is it going to remain a democracy or is it moving in a different direction? It is moving in a different direction, that should be a concern. But we have to keep this moral difference. And populism and different ideologies and right and left, that's part of the democratic game. Are you and worried it, about what's going on around the world with populism now? I think within democracies, I think it's a natural response to what happens and change within democracies. But and dying I think we, is a natural response. I just wonder if you're worried about it. I'm not, I, I'm not, over, I'm not overly uh, worried about it, but I just think that the failure to distinguish between democratic societies and non-democratic societies, between free societies and fierce societies, this is an ongoing problem as people follow this. So when people attack this or that thing that will happen in a democracy and cast it as fascism, cast it as if it's right, you know, some authoritarian right. regime, what it does is it blurs the line. Uh, uh, Natan Sharansky, who I wrote the book with, he said, the worst day of human rights violations in a free society is better than the best day in a fear society. In a and fear if you society. don't keep that distinction clear, and if you don't, un then you won't understand why democracies need each other so much. The reason why I have faith in the alliance of NATO is because they're all democracies. And ultimately, I think that they will stand together. And sometimes we lose sight of, of what keeps us together we're, we're, and what separates us from non-democratic right. regimes that don't give their people any rights, the rights to vote or the right to have basic freedoms that we often so take as, for granted. 